Hey guys, it's time again for another Maddie haul. Why I do this move? I don't know. Hi. <laughs> All right, so it's been a bit since my birthday haul. Um, so if this is your first time seeing me on the channel, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Maddie and I do a show on Tuesdays called Old Reader, New Reader. That's live and we talk about comics. And uh, if you watch that show already, then hi, thanks for hanging out today. So the comic book haul part of this is a little bit small, um, but I do a lot of board games. So we're gonna start with the comic books first. So a lot of floppies again this month. Um, I don't know what happened to make me a floppy person, but here it is. Um, so I just got in um, this variant I picked up from Horizon Zero Dawn comic, Liberation. This is issue two. Uh, the cover art is by, whoops, Yana, sh I shouldn't say it. Anyways, so this is some of the like uh, concept art that's also in the um, art book for Horizon Zero Dawn. And so they made a cover that has some of the concept art of Aloy on it. So I ordered that specifically for that so I could frame it because I'm a huge Horizon Zero Dawn fan. I cosplay Aloy. I made the whole costume by myself. I'm obsessed with Horizon Zero Dawn. So absolutely had to pick this up. I will be trade waiting for the action for the rest though. So it's just me picking up just this cover so I can frame it and then I'll be picking up the trade later. But I did like the Horizon Zero Dawn comic that had already come out. It's by a different, it's for, it's centered around a different character. Um, but I did really enjoy it. This new one is centered more around Aloy itself, herself. So I am really excited for that. Um, yeah, let's get all the trades out of the way first. I also got a ton of Infinite Frontier, of course, so that is finally finished out. Infinite Frontier is a DC summer event. It's only six issues and six issues are now done. Um, so of course, I had to pick up this very expensive variant cover of issue four of Infinite Frontier. A um, little bit spoilers, but this is um, Roy Harper. So it's the special cover I'm not a good artist is by, but special Roy Harper cover of Infinite Frontier Volume 4 or Issue 4. And I'm a huge, huge, huge Roy Harper fan. So I've been picking up every issue of Infinite Frontier. And anytime there's a special cover with Roy on it, I pick it up. So, uh, you know, goodbye $25. And hello, <laughs> Infinite Frontier issue that will go on my wall instead. But not a very, it's a little spooky. I'm a little spooky guy. But yeah, of course, I also picked up the next two covers of Infinite Frontier. Um, I'm excited to sit down this weekend and finally read and complete that and see how it goes. Um, I hope it holds up to what I've been enjoying so far. You never know with DC events, or I mean, really any big comic book events because they're enjoyable, but it's 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 not a huge, like, um, you don't get a lot of close character moments usually. It's more about how the events can affect everything else, all the comic books around it. Um, but my boy Roy's in there and that's all I really care about. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, next, of course, I've been picking up Wonder Girl as it's been coming out because, I mean, look at her. Look at Yara Floor, she's beautiful. And this really cute cover, I mean, I had to. She's perfect. I'm just excited to have a new Wonder character. It just makes me so happy. And the art's perfect because it is Joelle Jones and I, um, and I'm obsessed with her art. Um, I definitely recommend you all picking up any Joelle Jones. If you haven't, she's been doing Catwoman. Um, but she's also very well known for Lady Killer. Um, and she also has a pug. I have a lot of pugs. Well, I have one pug right now, but I foster pugs. So big fan of her. And we are continuing Star Wars High Republic. So I've told my <laughs> local comic book store to just give me um, all the Star Wars High Republic stuff, I am following all of it. The novels, the children's books, um, the comic books, both um, the IDW Star Wars High Republic Adventures, as well as the Marvel, Marvel, Marvel Star Wars High Republic comic books as well. So here are the adventures IDW, that, so it's more of like a younger audience, um, but still very good. Um, keeping that going, as well as the new issue of Star Wars High Republic, the regular Marvel stuff. So super excited. And speaking of that, um, the first trade came in for that too. So double dipping, you know, let's just throw my money to the breeze. 
Um, but the first trade for Star Wars High Republic came out. Um, I already read it, but I'm excited to read it again. <laughs> really enjoying all these characters. Um, really enjoying just seeing some female Jedi more doing stuff. It's it's nice to, I really like the High Republic stuff. I was really into KOTOR, so Knights of the Old Republic. Um, I love reading about Jedi and Star Wars verse when it's a different time where you have more Jedi and you have more of the culture and um, how the group works and things like that. And you have a little more diversity as far as like types of, you know, alien species and Jedi and also, you know, of course, gender and race as well. But just being able to see so many different types of Jedi, not just like, okay, most of the Jedi are dead except for these few, right? Um, so I really like living in that time and seeing like if the Jedi didn't have as much to worry about regarding Sith, what is that? What is the like the peak of Jedi look like? The peak of the Jedi Order, and that's what's been really great about High Republic. And the manga is out. Look how cute this is. Um, I'll show you guys some art as well. Um, I haven't dug into this yet, but I'm also a big manga person. Um, so really excited for this. And I'm filming this after Star Wars Visions. <laughs> just dropped so I'm hoping that this leads to more like you know manga anime more Japanese inspired like Star Wars stuff because you know Star Wars is inspired by um you know Japanese film you know Seven Samurai all that kind of stuff um and I would like to see Star Wars open up to more different types of cultures and putting that in there I really appreciate being able to see that okay also I'm a new Star Wars fan so if I say anything weird don't judge me I'm new I'm learning. Um, board game time. <laughs> so I went to a couple of conventions over the past couple of months. I went to um, our localish convention, uh, Lexington uh, Toy and Comic Con. Normally we go as a group, but you know we've all been pretty busy, so I just kind of stopped by. Um, and I also went to Gen Con in Indianapolis, and that is a huge, huge, huge board gaming, uh, tabletop role playing game, card game convention. So it's been going on forever and I was nervous because I was like, Ugh. usually it's very, very busy, but they operate at like less than half capacity or le less than half like what they would normally have um, attendance wise. And everyone was wearing masks and I felt very comfortable. I got tested afterwards, um, before and afterwards. And I had a wonderful time. It was just great to walk around like a vendor's hall and go to like panels and you know, buy board games. So I have a ton of board games. Hopefully you guys are into board games. I, there's, a, there's some comic book board game crossover. So here we go. So first uh, is one I've been wanting for a long time. That's Ukatoa. Um, this is by, this is um, under the Darrington Press. So this is a Critical Role <laughs> board game. So Critical Role, for those of you who don't know, is a D&D &D podcast um, done by a lot of nerdy voice actors. Um, that's gotten pretty much like it's huge, huge fame and really like it's been one of those um, actual play shows that's really brought D and D back to like the mainstream. Um, there's comics book comic books for it that are really good. I think even good for those who don't listen to the podcast. They have an animated series coming out, and they've become with a couple board games. They have Ukatoa, um, as well as oh, there's a sticker back here. Neat. Uh, <laughs> and we also have a Critical Role Munchkin, which I've been dying to pick up, but I still haven't had a chance to find one in the wild because um, I want to just pick it up instead of ordering it. Um, I haven't got to play this yet, but I'm excited. The art looks really cool. I've heard good things about it. Next, um, <laughs> I picked this up on a whim. I, it says, hey, cutie. So I saw their banner from far away and I was like, oh, the art looks very cute. So I walk over, I'm already pretty much convinced to buy whatever this is. And I'm like, hey, so what's, hey cutie, what is, what is this about? And they're like, hey, yeah, so this is a dating sim card game. And he goes on to explain that. I was like, you don't have to explain anything more. I'll buy it. And I've already played this a couple of times. I've really enjoyed it. So like you would play like a dating sim sort of like video game, everyone has certain stats that you have to fill. Um, so there's like, Oh gosh, I always forget which one is which, but there's like brains and edginess, style, how flirty you are or whatever. 
And you have to fulfill those exactly with the cards in your hand in order to date the person. And there's several references in here, nerdy references. You've got like your Sailor Moon character. There's a character named Gollum who does like magic tricks and he likes shiny things and hates short people. Um, you've got like, there's a guy like very Persona 5. Um, it was very cute. I think um, we were already inspired to make um, our own cards, dating cards to put in here of our friends or maybe combo characters we like or whatever. Very great, it's a nice short game, super fun. Okay, um, we also got Grimwood. So this is a quick, I love little tiny card games you can carry around. Um, it's a quick card game, two, six players, about 30 minutes, um, where you get to draw these different characters. You search the forest and complete, compete with other players to collect the most supernaturals, hunt the most birds, or see the most places. You usually get something from the Grimwood you just want the most something. So it's a, it's a collecting the most somethings game. Um, and we haven't played this one yet, but I already love the, the box design. You got some little creepies in here. It looks very cute. You know, I'm gonna collect the most board games. That's where I'm at with this. Uh, so next I picked up another like small card game, Drinking Quest. <laughs> uh, Drinking Quest Old Habits, a Jason Anarchy game. This looked really cute, so it's it's, it's very D and D focused. Um, it's a drinking game and a tabletop RPG. So you're setting off on a simple RPG adventure, but when your hero dies, you must chug your drink. Uh, this time, the hero is much older than before, and the game itself is a throwback to the glory days of tabletop role playing games, the eighties. Um, yeah, so I this I mean, I'm an adult. I like drinking and I like Dungeons and Dragons. So this seemed really fun. I really liked the art on the back and we got to do a little bit of like a playthrough at the table and this seems like something I would really enjoy. So it just seems like a nice fun thing. You can, you always need shorter games to throw in with your really, your bigger games, your longer games to kind of like make your game night go well and efficiently, right? So uh, a comic book game, Marvel Splendor. <laughs> So uh, I've never actually played Splendor, my, my friends rave about it, but I do have a habit of buying any board game that is comic book, like Marvel or DC related. So I just keep picking them up. <laughs> so I have um, like, I think we have Marvel code names, we've got like the Hydra game, things like that. So of course, why wouldn't we pick up Marvel Splendor? So really excited about this. I don't know um, who all is gonna be in this, but already looking at the back, I see Lockjaw, I see Spider Woman, uh, we see Peter Quill, um, a nice variety of characters in here. And I just like seeing anything I can play that has like these characters or like even random characters I get really excited about. Just like the same reason I really love the DC deck building game. I think everyone should play it. If you're a DC fan, you know I'm a DC fan before I'm a Marvel fan. Um, it's great to play these games and then also get to see these like obscure characters in there. I mean, they even have my boy Roy in it, so... You know, I'm there. All right, another one that we are really excited to play, but we're waiting until it's a good time, a good group, is Escape the Grand, Escape from, sorry, the Grand Hotel. So it's an escape room game. This box is beautiful. I don't know how well you can see the foil on this. Uh, I just picked it from our local bookstore. I'm assuming since this is an escape room game, we're gonna play it once and then not be able to play through it again, but that's fine because we can, you know, pass it along. Um, I love escape rooms like a lot. I'm very competitive in them. I hate asking for tips. I love playing video games that are like escape room games, like the Zero Escape vi uh, video games, like 999. Um, love them. I love anything I can solve a puzzle in. So really excited for this. This is like a, you need at least, do do do. I think at least two players. So it looks like it can't be like a group activity, but regardless of how pretty this box is, buying board games is like buying collected editions for comic books sometimes, because sometimes I'm like, how nice is this gonna look on my shelf though, right? You guys get it. Werewords. <laughs> so if you played Werewolf or Mafia, where you, you know, everyone has randomly drawn a card of, you know, if they're a villager or the werewolf and, or the seer. So someone is like being the betrayer and has to convince the other ones while the rest are trying to figure out who the betrayer is. Um, this is the same sort of deal, except for they put a little spin on it where there is a uh, certain word that people have to guess. 
Um, so in where words, players guess a word by asking yes or no questions. Figure out the magic word before the time is up and you win. So in this, the werewolves are trying to keep the other characters from guessing the right word because they also know what the right word is. And so they're trying to throw them off by asking different sorts of questions or, you know, whatever. This has been really fun. We've played it. It's a great for a quick group game. And it's great for like board game newbies. I think games like Were Werewolf, Werewords are very easy to catch on to very quick. Um, next, if I can grab it. All right. Next up, Happy Little Dinosaurs. Smile. It's almost over. This is by Unstable Games. I think you, a lot of you will recognize this art style. Um, I haven't got to place one yet, but it looks so cute. I love the art. Um, <laughs> it's two to four player game, and you have to try to dodge all of life's natural, predatory, and emotional disasters. You might fall into a pit of hot lava, get attacked by saber tooth squirrels, or get ghosted by your dino date. But the dino who survives it all wins the game. So you have this little like token card, I guess, to get you out of the thing. But regardless, look how cute that is. I'm sure it'll also be devastating as most cards from uh, Unstable tend to be most games, you know, where awful, terrible things are going to happen to you, uh, which honestly sounds great. Okay, <laughs> so um, my last two board games, I guess you could refer to as like normie board games. Um, we were gifted Pugopoly, so like Monopoly, but for pugs, because we foster pugs and we have a pug named Moose. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty spot on gift, you know. And the next I got this for Elliot, Dungeons and Dragons Monopoly, which also looks really cool. You all should know that I hate Monopoly with a fiery passion. I only play it because my lovely friends and Elliot both really like Monopoly. So once a year, I'll play Monopoly. I'll give in, I'll be nice, but I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Okay, so the last couple things I got are just art pieces that I got at cons. So at LexCon, I picked up this Porco Rosso uh, print from Chris Schweitzer. So he's worked with Kyle Starks on several projects. Um, Chris did the art for Mars Attacks, which is one of my favorites. He also worked on Dead of Winter. Um, he's also worked on um, some other comics with Kyle as well awesome guy also in Kentucky and I love Porco Rosso it's one of my favorite Ghibli films and I love this art print I definitely recommend checking out his work his art his like woodworking stuff like basically Chris Schweitzer looks like just a very happy Ron Swanson if you if you watch Parks and Rec like the sweetest guy he's also been on Ori or New Reader before so you should check it out and I also picked this up for Elliot Sorry, it's still in the wrapping. This really cool, like, box art of um, Mega Man 2. I like the selection screen. Look how cool it is. And it's heavy. This is hefty. I need to... I wish I got the guy's card. I'm sure I have it somewhere, but they also had um, some really cool, like, huge prints, huge, like, box art of, like, Silent Hill stuff. And I'm a huge Silent Hill fan. And it's really hard to get like extra merchandise for that now because Konami killed it, destroyed it. Um, but it has really cool like Robbie the Rabbit poster, like amusement park poster. Robbie the Rabbit shows up in three. And oh man, I want it so much, but it was like $140. And so maybe next, I hope they come back. I hope I get to see them again and actually pick that up because I would really, really like to have it. It's, it was beautiful. <laughs> All right, so that's my haul. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this. I hope you liked the video. Comment down below if you have, you know, read any of these books or played these board games. Do y'all play board games? What do you play? What do you like? Um, or hey, you know, are you guys going to any cons? Are you excited? Are you nervous? I'd love to hear about it. Um, yeah, I hope you like this. Uh, comment down below, subscribe, future videos. Um, catch me on Tuesdays on Old Reader, New Reader. So it's me and another person, and one of us is the old reader, one of us is the new reader. Typically, sometimes we pick a book neither of us have read, and then we just talk about it. So I have a, a great variety of guests that come on, um, and it's just nice to hang out with the chat. It really makes my week. Um, it's just great talking to you guys. So yeah, thank you all. I hope I see you all soon. Bye.